Raw just went off the air, and I got to tell you, I was actually very impressed with how Raw was able to deal with the pressure as of Slammiversary yesterday. I know WWE doesn't see TNA as a viable threat to them, but off of what they did yesterday, I definitely think that they should start, you know, noticing them a little bit more, even though they don't quite get the uh, quite as much of a rating as uh, Raw does. They end up getting, uh, they start off the show with Stephanie McMahon. She goes out there and basically says Triple H is not going to be competing tonight because apparently he's supposed to be competing against Curtis Axel. I don't know. If it was just to me, I found the entire thing kind of bullshit just because at the like at the spur of the moment, no pun intended because I was just I'm watching the Heat game right now. Uh you know, at the spur of the moment though, when Triple H was doing that whole thing with the 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 dehydration thing, like how he was like he felt you know, weak against Curtis Axel. It was very unbelievable to me just because of the fact that he just fought a big match with Brock Lesnar just 24 hours right before, not even 24 hours. But um, I found it kind of predictable that Steph and Vince were going to somehow get involved. But it was glad it was it was good seeing them on uh, Raw again. I don't think I don't remember the last time we saw uh, Stephanie McMahon on Raw. I mean, and I, I mean in an actual Raw role rather than her sporadic appearances as she had last year. But all in all, um, the beginning of the show was pretty good. Uh, the Shield ended up coming out right after, uh, right afterwards, but then WWE went to commercial break for just a few minutes to go to a, uh, a six-man tag with The Shield taking on Daniel Bryan, Kane, and Randy Orton, which The Shield ended up winning, which I was pretty happy with. Um, a very, very good six-man tag match. Uh, very good. Um... I believe at this time it was around the first quarter of the uh, Indianapolis game, and at the time I was very, uh, very agile. I wanted to see exactly what was going to be going on with the with the Heat because at this time uh, Indiana was winning like fourteen to six or something like that, and I'm like, whoa, Indiana actually has a chance here. But judging by the score right now, ninety six seventy two with a minute to go in the fourth, it looks like Miami's going to be looking at another uh, finals with the Spurs. So. Um, all in all, though, the opening of the show was pretty good. I thought so, at least. Um, like I said, The Shield ended up getting the victory over uh, Team Hell No and Randy Orton. Um, I'm not going to go over the entire show, just main parts of it, because I didn't watch all of the show, because like I said, the Heat game was on, so I kind of missed um, around the 8, you know, 8 o'clock. Eight, well, 9 o'clock if it's your time. Exact, I'm not sure exactly uh, which time zone you're watching this from, but uh, it might be 9 o'clock for you guys, so... Um, what else happened? Uh, I think, oh, the contract signing. We had a contract signing for the, uh, for the match with CM Punk and Chris Jericho at the, uh, at the WWE Payback, which like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going yet, but if I am, I definitely will let you guys know. Um, follow me on Twitter at the PTE show and follow me on my new sports channel to er, sports channel, sports Twitter too. Uh, at the PTE Sports. You know, I've been tweeting about the game here. Um, I'm going to be tweeting about the live hockey game between the Blackhawks and Kings tomorrow. Game 3, baby, in the Staples Center. I'm ready. Uh, 3.30 p.m., I believe, is when start uh, when the puck drops. So uh, I hope you guys can uh, catch up with me on Twitter and, uh, you know, let me know. Follow me on Twitter and let me know you're watching. So, uh, But we kicked off with uh, this contract signing. I expected nothing really of it because... Unlike a lot of people on Twitter, um, a lot of people thought that uh, CM Punk was going to be showing up for some reason, which I don't know why he would. I mean, I'm sure he's probably in L.A. rooting on his Blackhawks right now, but, you know, you don't exactly know where CM Punk's going to be at this point, but they ended up revealing later on that it was just going to be Paul Heyman instead. So, um, you know, I didn't feel anything really of this contract signing. I felt it was just like any ordinary contract signing, except without the uh, the the big uh, fight at the end of the show because your fight at the end of the uh, contract signing. But um, you know, I didn't really feel anything of it. I mean, I just wasn't a huge fan of it. By the way, Miami just won ninety nine seventy six. So congrats to Miami. Uh, congrats to any Miami Heat fans out there. So uh, if you're watching this. Leave a comment down below saying, like, go Heat or something like that, or go Spurs. Who are you guys per pulling for in the NBA Finals, Miami or San Antonio? 
uh, their third straight appearance in the NBA Finals, fourth in the last eight seasons. So, uh, sorry it just turned into a sports review there. Just had to point that out. But uh, on to the contract signings, shall we? Um, so, it wasn't that bad, but I just really didn't feel anything of it. Jericho kind of put over a lot more than he was expected to, if you know what I mean. Um, but Heyman ended up signing for Punk. Jericho ended up signing for himself. And we have this match at Payback. Um, they tried teasing it towards the end as to um, Jericho wanting to change the venue for the uh, for the match because it was in Chicago and I guess Jericho didn't want to deal with having the uh, um, the hometown crowd advantage so he was saying like oh let's have it SummerSlam let's have it at MSG I'm assuming he's talking about WrestleMania 30 or he's like oh why don't we have it right here in Hartford and then you know all the time Paul Heyman said no so um but yeah nice tease there I guess it was a nice uh, pretty nice tease there even though Punk is not in the building I just found it pretty funny but um I, yeah, that's about all I had to say about the contract signing. I didn't really think much of it. Um, later on, we found out that the main event of the night was going to be John Cena taking on Curtis Axel in a no-disqualifications match. But we'll move on to the co-main event, Daniel Bryan versus Ryback. Daniel Bryan ends up getting the disqualification victory here when Ryback puts him through a table. Uh, the way he went down looked very, very, very real. It, uh even someone had a picture of it. I guess they took it on the WWE app. Take a drink, guys. Uh, and the WWE app, uh, I guess someone took a picture of it. And uh, he had this big old cut on the back of his bicep there. Um, not sure if it's uh, anything hazardous or anything. I'm sure uh, wrestling news sites will let you guys know. But, um, yeah, it was a very good match. And despite Daniel Bryan wrestling another match about an hour and a half earlier... Um, it was pretty good. It was it was pretty good for a for a Ryback match, but uh, uh, Daniel Bryan got hot towards the end. Even locked in a no lock, uh, well label lock, whatever you guys want to call it. I just I just call it whatever it's called nowadays. So uh, there's that. But um, it was it was pretty good. I think Ryback putting uh, Daniel Bryan through a table only made Ryback look better than uh, right now. You know because it's like hey. He just put Kofi through a table, through three tables, excuse me, on SmackDown and sent them through this huge elbow surgery thing, only found on the WWE app. That's me with my Powerade here. Uh, but the match was very good, I thought. Um, and, it, you know, then uh, Cena ended up coming out trying to save uh, Daniel Bryan, but then was interrupted by Curtis Axel, and we got into the main event here. Um, I didn't watch most of the main event because I wanted to see a little bit of the fourth quarter, even though, yes, I know it was a big blowout towards the end of the third. Um, but I didn't watch most of it. But I did catch the very end um, with uh, Paul Heyman hitting Cena with an iPad or something like that. I saw an iPad get involved somehow. Even technology hurts, guys. Technology can hurt despite its advantages. It can hurt. Um... But later on, we then saw Ryback come out and basically uh, spear Cena through a table that he set up during the Dan O'Brien match. Um, then ended the show with Ryback screaming, Ryback rules. Um, I felt this was a very good show after Slammiversary. Oh, by the way, I can't believe I forgot this moment. They set up a, a point where they set up a chair in the corner and uh, Cena was running towards Axel, Axel moved out of the way, and Cena smashed into the chair. Now, many wrestling fans who saw Slammiversary yesterday saw Gail Kim take the exact same hit, and she took it better than Cena did. So, um, if you, I'm not sure it's, if it's on YouTube or not yet, but if it is, I hope you guys can see that, because the way she took that chair shot yesterday was golden. Hashtag Golden. Now, how Cena did it today? Uh, no, no, no. Cena, Cena slowed down. He ended up like putting his back into it instead of his head. Whereas Gale just ran towards it, smashed her head down, just poof, done, laid out. But um, yeah. Other than that, though, 
Um, from what I saw from the night, it was very good. Um, like I said, there was a lot more that happened, as well as uh, Fandango took on uh, the Great Kali. Uh, I guess Barrett took on the Miz. I guess like foreshadowing a, ta- a, a, a Intercontinental title match between the two. Um, I guess. Uh, oh, another Wyatt promo. Uh, Wyatt family promo. Um, I didn't find this one this one as ominous as the one that was last week, but it was still a very good promo. Um, I don't know. When I think of the Wyatt family, I think of an ominous tone. I'm not sure if it's just you uh, or if it's just me. I'm sorry. Uh, I find the Wyatts more ominous than they are anything. So, um, yeah, that's about all I had to say about Raw. I'm sorry that it's taking so long, but, uh, yeah, I guess you could say this mixed in with a uh, Spurs or Spurs, uh, Miami and uh, Indianapolis Game 7 review, I guess you could say. Um, so leave me your thoughts, everything down in the comment section below. If you're watching the video and you watched uh, the Pacers and Heat, let me know. Go Heat, go Spurs. What do you guys have to say? Leave me your thoughts and everything down in the comment section below. And I am out, Perry the Entertainer, signing out. And as soon as my micro or as soon as my mouse can start going, peace.